We've been trying to straighten and channelize the Missouri River uh, for, for a century to, for navigation purposes. And in the process, of course, um, we cut off oxbows, we cut off chutes, we built levees, we built wing dikes, we channelized the river, we restricted the river. And it wasn't until later on that, that uh, people and the government, Fish and Wildlife, observed the uh, considerable loss of wildlife habitat and, and natural ecosystems that historically had existed along the river. A lot of talk about what to do about that, and there's been several responses, and the, the big muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge is the Fish and Wildlife Service's response to what we saw as an unmet need for, for, for wildlife, fish and wildlife resources in the lower Missouri River. The concept of the Big Muddy uh, Refuge is definitely different than what you see across the United States. It's sort of a beads on a string or, or a string of pearls. And if you think about the, the Missouri River, the Missouri River is a highly impacted uh, areas or a river system as it comes through Missouri. It's been more, more or less channelized. It's got tremendous impacts, negative impacts in the upstream tributaries. And what's happened with the Big Muddy is you've created these little pockets, these little beads along that, that stretch of river that are protecting land. They're providing habitat for wildlife. They are providing recreational opportunities for the public. There were plans in place. Uh, and, and thoughts were being given to this type of work dating back to the 1960s. But the flood in 1993 provided the catalyst for this. It was such a devastating flood, uh, not only in how large the flood was by large, I mean water depth, and the volume of water, but it lasted for months. It was in the growing season. This wasn't a typical April or May flood. This water was really high all summer and tore things up, and people needed relief. So there were a lot of options available, and, uh, and the refuge was one of them. We began establishing units in 1994, that the refuge was authorized, we began work, and we acquired the first parcel in 1995. Uh, currently we have 12 units in, I believe it's 11 counties, uh, scattered between St. Louis and Kansas City, a uh, total of about 21,000 acres. In the era that we live in now, the government does not come in and take land for conservation purposes or for recreational purposes. Uh, the, the Fish and Wildlife Service works with real, willing sellers, people who are ready to sell their land and uh, move on to the next thing. You know, they're able to sell their land, they leave a legacy, and then they can go back at any time and use that land or visit the land if they just want to remember what it was like. It seemed like lots of times we were either praying for rain or praying that the rain would stop. And, and so there were a lot of droughts where they didn't, they lost a lot of the crops. Yeah. And then the rains would come and then we'd be praying the rain would stop and it wouldn't stop. And then mm -hmm. I think the legacy does live on because yeah. of Fish and Wildlife. Well, they've kept the name the same. Exactly. Yeah. And and so, and so that's change. good. And, yeah. and, um, and I think that both Ruth's dad and our dad um, it would have been happy that the Fish and Wildlife Service did come in and and, and do that because it was not the you know probably prime farmland for mm -hmm. a lot of other people to take over. I was born and raised down here and uh, know know the area pretty well. You know, enjoy it. It's good farm ground. You know, it is. It's just always got to watch the river. You know. Whether it floods or not, you have a lot of seep water issues. Since the refuge, it's grown up in vegetation, trees, cottonwoods mainly. You know, there's been some hardwoods planted. Uh, they've survived the high water so far. No, it's definitely helped the wildlife. We uh, border ground on the south, just up here. You know, and we hunt deer and turkeys. You know, next to it or on it. It's helped that considerably. We're happy, that's where we'll be. The Big Muddy is, is unique in that when we established this refuge, we decided that we would leave it open to hunting and fishing under Missouri statewide regulation, 
with just a few very rare exceptions, small areas that are closed primarily for safety. Whatever comes in season in Missouri is, is available to be hunted on the Big Muddy. The, the Missouri River is one of the treasures of our landscape and, um, and the different species that make their home there or at least pass through. I mean the waterfall migration that comes through you know, the Missouri Flyway is just incredible. We have millions of snow geese passing through here in the next couple of months. Uh, the whitetails and turkeys that live in the river bottoms, the quail in the fringe habitat. There's hunters that are traveling, you know, the river bottoms from St. Joe all the way to St. Louis. And the hunters are injecting over a billion dollars a year into the economy of Missouri, and a lot of that money going directly into rural economies. Yeah, we're, we're really, really pleased to have them out there. It's a super nice facility in their new building, and, and the, whole, the whole refuge is nice addition to the community. For the sportsmen, you know, just tourists in general, I think it's a good idea. That land was devastated in the 93 flood. You know, we hear a lot of comments from people who travel a long ways to come to the refuge. Maybe come on into Boonville for the, some of the historic sites, maybe the riverboat, uh, you know, maybe maybe spend some money in our restaurants, gas stations, and, and shops. Or anytime we can uh, bring people into the community is, is just a big asset. The Missouri River is, in my, in my opinion, still an underutilized recreation resource in Missouri. Fishing is really good in the Missouri River. I mean, the catfish fishing is spectacular. Uh, not only numbers, but size. There's a huge, huge catfish out there. Uh, on a weekday, you might not see another boat in some stretches of the river. We have uh, people gather uh, mushrooms, as I've mentioned, but also uh, blackberries, pecans, whatever uh, wild, you know, edibles are available as long as it's for personal use. We're getting more and more bird watchers. Bird watching is really good in this refuge uh, because it's adjacent to the river and birds follow those rivers and they migrate. So we have a lot of, you know, especially spring, uh, the warbler migration is pretty, pretty spectacular. Yeah, this backwater of the Missouri River makes for fantastic habitat for so yeah. many different species. With this job, I'm constantly talking to kids about natural communities and what they are made up of. And so often, a lot of times, the kind of what we call doom and gloom topics come up of, you know, this land has been converted to this, or a lot of it's cropland now. Or the idea of a big, muddy wildlife refuge um, to reconnect or reconstruct to what it once was is a positive message that I can end to the end. Being in uh, the Big Muddy definitely gives you a totally different view of the river than what you see when you're driving over I-70 where it bridges it. Um, it is so much easier for me when I'm on like Big Muddy territory to picture the river as it was and as Lewis and Clark saw it and as the Missouri Indians saw it. And so that's, that's a really valuable experience for anybody to have um, just going out there and reconnecting to that wildness. On the Missouri River, we do a lot of population monitoring of big river species. So big river species are fish that are specially adapted to the turbid waters of the Missouri River. Yeah, we partner with the Big Muddy National Fish and Wildlife Refuge quite often to uh, create habitat as well as monitor the use of that habitat by aquatic species. And so we see this habitat diversity, whether it's the side channels and the chutes and the backwaters and the sloughs and the floodplain lakes coming back and then the, all of the habitat and wildlife that it supports, especially the aquatic fish that we see using those habitats that have been created. The Big Muddy Fish and Wildlife Refuge has been providing a habitat that was lost during years of modifications. And so to see those habitats come back and the aquatic species and the different life stages that it supports uh, has been really great to see that come back to the Missouri River. When, when you come to one of those refuge units, you almost feel it immediately. It, it feels like things get a little wilder. The, 
the banks get more uneven, things get interesting right away. Um, and all of the fish and wildlife, the birds, you know, all the mammals that use the areas, you know, they know that and they use it. Um, you immediately start seeing interesting species when you're on, on a big muddy refuge unit. I do enjoy the walking trails. I spend time up in the uh, Jameson Island area. When you reach the a portion of the trail where it brings you right out onto the banks of the Missouri River. Here you've been in dense uh, floodplain forest and all of a sudden you're on the river bank and there's no sign of human activity, uh, no sign of any development of course, it's purely its natural state and it's just such a beautiful uh, vista to walk out onto to see this, this glorious river uh, from that vantage point. Uh, what I would like the public to understand is that they have this wonderful resource and they should take advantage of it, use it. Uh, we have as good a river recreation as any place in the country. Uh, I would like to see uh, the, the refuge continue to grow. We're a little over one third of the way to our target of 60,000 acres. I think someday that will happen. Uh, slow but sure, you know, I, we, we buy land from willing sellers and uh, I'm gonna look forward to seeing the continued growth of the refuge.